All right, so data wrangling, what are we doing here exactly? Uh, so as I mentioned, we have the goal here of going from da data, messy data, data that exists as it exists in whatever format it exists in, uh, and turning it into something that we can actually use. Uh, so what does that entail? Um, so there's a bunch of technical details, a bunch of different steps and tricks that you can take to move data from where you want it to be to where, or from where it is to where you want it to be. But here are the basic ideas that we're going to be applying over and over in all the different tools that we're using across any different language that you happen to be working in. And it's these. First, always look directly at your data so you know what it looks like, right? The goal here is that we are trying to change data from one format into another into something that we can use. You can't do that if you don't know what it looks like at the start. Uh, it's a bad idea to just open up a data set or just read the documentation even uh, and then just start working with the data. You want to look at the data so that you know what sort of format it takes so that you know how you can change it. Second, always think about what you want your data to look like when you're done. We are turning data from some format that it's in to some format that we want it to be. We can't do that if we don't know what our goal is. So even before you start, you want to think, OK, I want to do some sort of analysis what format do I want my data to be in? What variables do I want to be in there? How do I want them to be usable? Should they be numeric? Should they be character variables? Whatever it's going to be, right? Think about how you want it to be structured. What do you want one row of data to be? Uh, do you want it to be like, let's say you're working with some sales data. Do you want it to be one row per product per year? Uh, one row per product per month? One row per product? Uh, do you want it to be, you know, what's the format that you're aiming for? So we know what it looks like now. We know what we want it to look like. And then the real question is, how can we take information from where it is and put it where we want it to be? Uh, that, that sounds straightforward, but it's going to be different depending on what it is that we're trying to do. So, for example, let's say that we have a, da a data set that has data by product by year for our sales information. And we want a data set uh, that just has data for product. How can we take the different values of, uh, of different for, each, for each of the different years in that product and squash it down into a single value for a single row of data? Right. Um, that is going to be the process. That's something that we're going to have to figure out. How can we take the information from where it is many rows of sales information and put it where we want it to be? One row of overall sales information. Or perhaps we have one column for each year for all the different products. Well, now I've got a, a bunch of different values over here. I want to turn that into a single value. How can I do that? Right. Think about how you can take information from where it is, put it where you want it to be. And then here is the real kicker, the real important part. After every step of data cleaning, look directly at your data again to make sure that it's doing what you think it's doing. I mentioned this last time as a general troubleshooting tip that after you run a line of code, you should check your result and see if it did what you expected. This is super duper important, especially when you are cleaning data, especially, especially when you are starting out cleaning data, uh, because you might not have the intuition for exactly how things are going to work. Uh, so it is very, very easy to write a line of code that you think is going to solve some sort of problem for you, but it doesn't do what you thought that it did. So the easiest way to check that uh, is not to memorize a whole bunch of stuff. Instead, it's just to look at your results and see if they're doing what you expect them to do. That's it. Um, I help a lot of people with problems related to data wrangling. I do a lot of data wrangling, cleaning, consulting. And when people have problems, almost all the time, their problem is not doing one of these four things. Either they didn't know what their data looked like at the start. They didn't have an idea of what they wanted their data to look like. They didn't think about how to move information from one place to another. or most commonly, they didn't check their work to make sure that it was doing what they thought that it did. Uh, and once they fix those, those problems, those are much more likely to be the issue than any sort of in particular coding problem, right? So do these things, especially the last one. Don't forget to check your work and make sure that it did what you thought it did, because sometimes it won't, and that can mess you up for ages, right? You can easily get in a place where one line of code didn't do what you thought it did, and then you write 18 more lines of code, and then by the end of it, you recognize that something is wrong, but you have no idea where the problem was. And it turns out it was 18 lines back. So I mentioned a lot of times looking at your data, look at your data over and over again every single time you write a line of code. How can you do that? Uh, well, if we're talking about R, you can literally look at your data in one way, right? We talked about last time, you can click on a data set, it will pop up a sort of spreadsheet view of your data, uh, and you can just look at it, right? And this can tell you things like what kinds of values things are taking, you know, what structure the data has, you know, how many uh, rows do you have per product or whatever. Um, uh, so that's one thing, you can just literally look at the data. You can also take summary statistics tables, and we also talked about these last time as well. These are just ways of checking your data. Uh, sum table or V table in the V table package are two different ways of getting some summary statistics. And this can tell you some inf important information, like, for example, are some of the values that a variable is taking 
not ones that you expect. Like if you've read the documentation and it said, okay, uh, you know, do you live in the north, south, east, or west? I'm going to code those up as one, two, three, and four. Um, and then you look at your summary statistics and it turns out the maximum value is 99. Uh-oh, what does that mean? Well, that means that you know that something weird happened. Either you did something weird when you were messing with that variable, um, or perhaps there's a value that they didn't tell you about that you're going to need to account for in your data cleaning. Other ways to check what value something takes, uh, the unique function will give you a list of all of the unique values that a variable takes, uh, or summary will be another way of getting summary statistics just like sum table. Another good thing to do is to check whether a certain whether a variable takes a certain value. I can take a data, uh, take my data set, take my variable out of it, and check if it equals some value that I'm interested in, and then sum it up. So let's say, for example, I'm creating a new variable, and I want this variable to um, to relabel some stuff. Maybe I have, I want to, I'm making a graph, and so I want to relabel long company names like McDonald's Company Incorporated to just McDonald's for the purpose of the graph. And so I might write some fun, some function that says, "Hey, look for the McDonald's Company Incorporated. Turn that just into McDonald's, right?" Then I could check if that worked properly by asking, hey, look at that name variable that I had. Does it equal McDonald's ever? Uh, and it should, because I just changed a bunch of stuff to be McDonald's. If it doesn't, that means I must have made a typo. Maybe it turns out that it wasn't McDonald's Company Incorporated. It was McDonald's Company Inc. So it didn't actually change anything because it didn't find any McDonald's Company Incorporated, right? Um, so this is a very easy kind of problem to make. So things to look for. When you're checking all these different functions that let you look at the values of a variable, check what values are in there, check what the observations look like, check for the presence of missing or unusable data. Uh, maybe you accidentally, you know, d deleted a bunch of values, right? Maybe you uh, created a ratio dividing one thing by another, uh, but then you accidentally didn't realize that the other thing you're dividing by is zero a lot of the time, and you got a bunch of missing values. Also important to look at is how the data is structured, right? What is the structure of the data? What does a row of data look like? What kinds of columns do you have? All right, so that's what we're going to be doing. Those are some general ideas. And, and, and what we're going to be doing, the, the, the way we can, we can con conceptualize going from the data that we have to where we're going, there's a couple of different stages of doing that that we're going to go through in this set of videos. Uh, so the first stage is going from some sort of raw data process to data in your computer. Like maybe you have you know, a trove of new newspaper archives and you want to code them up into data or you want to scrape somebody's website or whatever or you know, load in a bunch of company files. That's important stuff. I'm not going to cover it here, uh, largely just because we're not going to be doing a lot of that in this class. Um, but uh, uh, if you look back at the workshop video that I, that I had the link to, you can see I described some stuff for that there. What we're going to focus on that here on here is first we have some data we're going to turn something from tidy from data into what's called tidy data that's the first step so we're going to go from our data set to a tidy data set then once we have our tidy data set we're going to go from that tidy data set to data that is ready for our analysis so those are the stages that we're going to be talking about in these videos